Monica Isles. I am super excited to be with you today. Let's talk about this idea of going general in terms of manifestation. The most beautiful thing about going general is that it's not actually going general at all. Like it isn't like, well, I'm manifesting and whatever, whatever I get, I get. It's not that. <laughs> going general is actually accessing the alignment of all of your greatest desires, your specific desires, minus the resistance. And I'm so glad that this question was raised in my last live session because it's something I probably need to address more often, that going general is allowing yourself to feel at one with your best life minus the resistance because when we identify specific things and feel the need to affirm specific things over and over and over again, we give them so much power above our happiness. It's like we're sort of just waiting and waiting and waiting for these things to unfold. Whereas if we can just be at one with the present moment, these things which we have already identified, because again, you wouldn't try to manifest something unless there was something specific you wanted. <laughs> so you have an idea of what you want. But allowing yourself to feel the best is coming to you, you'll just be an automatic magnet for all of the specific things you, that you wanted, <laughs> minus the resistance, you'll just be a magnet for it. Okay, so I want to say that this is a live coaching session and I'm here to help. If you would like to do paid coaching with me, so it's just like this, face-to-face, one-on-one, studywithveronica.com, it's available there. Hi from Malaysia. <laughs> I have never been to Malaysia. At studywithveronica.com, you will also find how to access my free course, 10 Days to Manifesting Miracles in Your Life. And don't forget to check out, you know, YouTube, all of my videos, subscribe there, get alerted as to when I go online live. I go online live on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. I know there's threads. I've sort of dabbled in that so far. I haven't really figured out what to do with it. Not sure if you can go online live there, though. But the interesting thing is, is that as we progress in time, there will be new platforms to go online live. <laughs> and I'll be accessing those, too. All right, I'll be taking your questions, trying to take as many people's questions as possible, help as many people during the show. We can all sort of collectively you know, feed off of one another, get inspired by one another and help one another achieve our dream come true because that's why we're all here is because we want a better life. Manifestation is about just realizing that you have power over your destiny and you could call it manifesting, you could call it law of attraction, you can call it law of assumption. They're all the same. <laughs> it's all the same thing. Hello from Oregon. Lived in the Windy City Burbs during my youth. Awesome. I was in Oregon, let's see, uh, 2020 and 2021. It's very lovely there. Cannon Beach. I filmed lovely videos there. Had a wonderful time. How to change your dominant beliefs to eliminate third party and have your SP committed to you. Okay. If there is a third party, Please do not make the mistake of deciding you need to manifest the third party away. The reason for this, and it should be so obvious, but it, it isn't obvious to a lot of people. Okay, so you do these third party meditations, maybe a sleep meditation, your hypnos hypnosis, I, I don't know, whatever affirmations you're doing. Get rid of the third party. Erase them, clear them, rub them out. Where in that have you manifested your love relationship with this person? All you've really done is focus all of your energy on this third party, <laughs> this idea of competition. You haven't actually reinforced the important part, which is being in love with this person and receiving love and having a high consciousness to receive love. Now, dominant beliefs. 
who you already are is love, light, and beauty. And I gave the analogy of a dirty penny. As a kid, I used to love to clean coins. <laughs> I thought it was fun, you know, bringing these coins back to their vibrant self. And pennies, I believe they're copper. So they, they get all dirty and yucky and pennies have been all these different places. And, you know, I forget what it is that cleans the penny. I, I have no idea. But you put it in something and then suddenly it's beautiful, it's sparkling. So you are beautiful and sparkling underneath. Your dominant belief system is actually perfection because you came here to have this human experience to return to the fact that you are God expressing himself as man. You are perfect. You are, your dominant belief system is that of perfection and of the highest ability to unveil any experience into your life. So all we really need to do is heal these broken belief systems that told you that it wasn't possible to be in love with the person that you're in love with. Like it wasn't possible to receive love. That your love situation would have to contain some sort of competition, hence the third party. That you wouldn't be able to be loved in return, unrequited love. Uh, all these kind of false beliefs about love. And we tend to see a lot of broken relationships growing up. Uh, I mean, I grew up in a time when divorce actually wasn't that common. At least it wasn't that common in my town. But I grew up in the suburbs. <laughs> uh, middle class, middle class suburbs. Very traditional. Nobody was divorced. No no one had a single, a single family home. The point I'm trying to make is that when someone did get divorced, it was like, oh my gosh, you know, uh, an example of a broken you know, broken relationship, broken family. I mean, even my mother, watching her, she was sad her whole life because my father had passed away when she was 24, when I was a baby. She never was able to find another love. And then she passed away. And like I saw her crying and mourning all the time. So this idea of love was that it makes you sad. You don't get to have who you want. Who you want is going to be taken away from you. You know, abandonment themes, just associations with love. They're really, really bad. So, of course, and I'm just using me as an example, I just picked up all of these beliefs, even though they weren't really who I was. So I'm sure that you picked up beliefs as a child. Maybe you saw an, an adult who got cheated on. Maybe there was a third party when you were younger. You know, maybe someone split up. Maybe there was unrequited love. Like, these are common themes. Like, they're all over movies, too. <laughs> like, it's kind of hard to escape these things. But these things are learned beliefs. Uh, they don't have to be your dominant beliefs anymore. So how you can heal the broken parts of you is by first recognizing it. And this is why this constant affirmations affirming till you're blue in the face doesn't really work because you're not going to heal your limiting beliefs by drowning them out, essentially. You're going to heal your limiting beliefs by noticing them, not letting them be scary anymore. If you notice a limiting belief... Um, and I think maybe even the Wikipedia description of Law of Attraction says this, <laughs> is that you should avoid all negativity at all costs, that Law of Attraction is about positive only, like attracts like. And this is so false, by the way. It's, it's crap. <laughs> it's pure crap. Manifesting isn't about being happy all the time and pretending the sad parts don't exist and covering them up. Manifesting, which is why you're here, is about noticing these limiting beliefs and if you notice them, you haven't accidentally affirmed them. I think that that is a fear. Like they become like unwanted thoughts, intrusive thoughts become the boogeyman. And that's why people keep having them because they've labeled them these toxic villains. And oh my gosh, if this comes into my mind, I'm going to accidentally manifest this. I'm going to accidentally perpetuate the third party. There's going to be another third party. And I can't think this. So I have to say that all these other words. Affirm that the third party is gone for the next hour, three hours, all day, every single day. And then you just kind of hate that you ever discovered manifestation because it doesn't work and you just, you're tired. I always feel really bad for the people that come to me and they say, I've been doing this for three years and I'm tired. You'll know your manifesting is working if you feel energetic, full of life, and it's got to be natural. So go for calm and comfort first, but... Healing belief systems, write them down. Write down these bad things you tell yourself. And then look at the words and be like, you don't have any power over me. Like, why, why was I believing this? It's just something I picked up in childhood. I 
something I picked up from the adults who didn't know any better. It's okay. It doesn't define who I am. It's not ingrained in my subconscious to the point where I'm doomed for the rest of my life. Okay, how to get desired life income and everything. You know, you should manifest from a wholehearted, multitasked, these limiting beliefs, they duplicate. And if we don't heal them, they'll just latch onto something else. So desired life, what does your desired life look like? Uh, we don't always explore that because we think it's not possible. Your desired life is going to come when you are in vibrational alignment with it. And this is not about being high vibe and pretending to be happy. Vibrational alignment is like, I realize that I can have that kind of life. That was so eye-opening for me. Like, I never realized I actually could have a lot of money. Like, I thought I wasn't allowed to have it. <laughs> I know that sounds weird. But you almost feel like you're not allowed. Because you're not that kind of person. So thinking you're allowed, like, you feel stupid. What are you telling yourself all day long? You'll understand your current self-concept by the types of things you're telling yourself. That self-talk that comes so easily and so naturally. Again, the ego is not your enemy. Negative thoughts are not your enemy. What are they telling you? And how can you better understand where you, what kind of things you want to say to yourself? So it isn't necessarily that you say positive affirmations like you are beautiful or you are successful or you already have the love of your life. It isn't necessarily about saying these things, but rather just being kind kindness in your mind do you talk to yourself like you would talk to the love of your life do you talk to yourself like you talk to your best friend or a loved grandparent how do you talk to yourself you'll be able to get your desired life when you talk to yourself in the way that someone with their desired life would talk to themselves like people who have it all who are successful in money successful in love a lot of them, I mean, I want to say they're conceited, and I'm not, I'm not suggesting to be conceited. I'm just saying that they have a really high standard of living that they know that they're worth. They know it. They won't accept anything else. And they don't talk bad to themselves. Like, I'm going to guess all these billionaires. I don't really know their names. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to um, embarrass myself. But there's plenty of billionaires. In fact, when I was in Ketchum, Idaho, uh, I happened to be there at Billionaires Week, week, <laughs> accidentally. We tried to go to the Ernest Hemingway uh, Memorial. And we were greeted by a car because they thought we were coming. So I guess they thought I was a billionaire. <laughs> when they realized we weren't billionaires, they are like, oh, you can't be here. And there were helicopters, all this like um, private security. I was like, who's here? <laughs> We just we were just trying to take a walk by the Ernest Hemingway Memorial. That's all. These guys were like, you can't go that way. And then I read about, oh, the billionaires are here. <laughs> they don't talk bad about themselves. <laughs> they have really, really good self-talk. So honestly, like if you want to have a lot of money, you want your perfect life, you want to be able to play all day and not work nine to five anymore and not be in debt. You want the love of your life to adore you and text you all the time. Talk to yourself as if this was your reality. Like that could be like a, a simple no brainer <laughs> way of manifestation. Hi, Veronica. Hi. <laughs> you know, I don't plan which questions I see. Wow. A peek into your future. Yes. They really, they thought I was, but then they shooed me away. <laughs> That's okay. I did film a series of videos uh, outside while this was happening. So I went a little, a little further away and filmed a ton of videos. I haven't released all of them yet. Uh, how to ignore the 3D when it's always in front of you? This is a great question. We are getting great questions today. We really, really, really are. And I'm not picking and choosing. I'm just sort of seeing whatever I'm meant to see, but... This, again, ignoring the 3D. I really should do a series of videos on all of these things that manifestation is not. Ignoring the 3D. The 3D isn't permanent. So yes, it does not control how you feel about the future. 
but the 3D is real. If you watch a video that says the 3D isn't real, turn a blind eye to it, it's all fake. Please, that'll just affect your mental health and it'll make you feel weird inside because the 3D is real. It's the flip side of the coin. As within, so without. I think I said it right. So they're both important. They're both important. They're both real. The 3D just isn't the source. It's the extension. It's the flower that's bloomed. You know, you've got the seed and then you've got the flower. And the butterfly, uh, the cat, caterpillar and the butterfly. <laughs> They're both real. One started the other. So you want the 3D to change? Well, stop thinking it's permanent because it's not. Your life changes all the time. Keep a journal. I've kept journals for 33 years. <laughs> yep. I mean, no, 34. I think the first journal I kept ever was in 1989. It was one of those little diaries that had the little lock and key. <laughs> I thought that, like, you could break open that lock so easily. I'm not even sure why it was there, but it was cute. And I felt like nobody else could read my thoughts but me. But, I mean, you, you could break into it really easily. <sighs> Keep a journal. See where you were at. Life changes. Whether you try to or not, like it's constantly in change. So the 3D, you don't react to it as if it's permanent. You don't identify yourself concept by the current 3D because it's movable, it's shapeable, it's changeable. It doesn't, it isn't presenting your, like the 3D isn't giving you a prediction of the future. The 3D is showing you a reflection of what has been. You want a new reflection? Change you and the reflection will change. So we don't ignore the 3D. We pay attention to it. We understand it. We understand it as a place of growth, where we need to grow. And, you know, so it's important. It's actually important. Like, don't turn a blind eye to it or pretend like it's not happening. Understand. Take a look at the circumstances in your life. Try to identify where they're coming from. Instead of saying, oh, I had too many negative thoughts. This is why circumstances are showing up. No. They're trying to teach you. They're a teacher. Learning, growth. Yeah. Okay. I've officially run out of steam. I need lunch. <laughs> I need a coffee. <laughs> I will be making a coffee in my Nespresso machine with some oat milk. It's going to be wonderful. And I'll be eating spinach for lunch. So there you go. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I look forward to joining me soon. If you would like to join me privately sooner rather than later, studywithveronica.com, subscribe, follow, you know what to do.